Police stops. What to do if you are pulled over? Keep in mind that what you do and say during a traffic stop can be big. When a police officer begins to pull you over, be careful about everything you undertake so you can successfully defend yourself in any legal proceedings that might follow. Your choices are important. Whether the traffic stop ends in a simple moving violation or an arrest for a more serious crime, this video discusses principles relating to the U.S. Constitution as interpreted by the U.S. Supreme Court. Your state's law, however, can provide more protections. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing splendid, if you were to ask me. And if you are doing as marvelous as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about police stops, what to do if you're pulled over. The first thing is when you see the police car. If a police car is following you with its siren blaring or emergency lights flashing, pull over to the right quickly, but simply and come to a complete stop in a safe place. This is important. You want to come to a complete stop in a safe place. Pulling over right away is not an admission of guilt. Far from it. It just means that you were alert to everything that was happening around you. Also, by stopping as soon as you can, you'll have a better chance of figuring out exactly where and how the, the officer says you violated any traffic laws. This information can be useful should you and a lawyer later need to prepare a defense. One thing that you have to also be aware of is that pulling over in a way that will be the most likely to calm down an angry or annoyed traffic officer. Because at the end of the day, if you really think about it, it's all it all boils down to emotions. The officer, the traffic officer is trying to enforce the laws and he or she might not be in a good mood and you on your end might also be scared or something might be happening to you you're having a bad day so when you do things slowly and uh, comfortably you are trying to bring the tension down and that's very important use your turn signal to indicate any lane changes from left to right and slow down fairly quickly but not so quickly that the officer will have to brake to avoid hitting you Another thing you want to do is you want to pull over as far to the right as possible so that the officer will not have to worry about being clipped by vehicles in the right lane when coming up to your window. If you have children, infant in your car, or just uh, I would say senior citizen, people who are sick, people who are not, people who are kind of frail, you want to exercise extra caution. When the police officer, when you come to a complete stop you want to start reaching out for your uh, your papers right away if the police officer is behind you if he was he's walking but walking towards the car you want to be ready to answer any questions that he or she may ask you so what to do after you stop so i just told you when you see the police car you need to stop now what do you do right after you stop after you've pulled over to a safe spot you should normally turn off your engine at this point you might want to show the officer a few other token courtesies think about it you have little to lose and perhaps something to gain as i said earlier at the end of the day it all boils down to emotional came in here he or she might be annoyed by traffic or other things going on and you might be not in your best mood so you want to calm things down roll down your window all the way you want to put out a cigarette if you have one and discard any chewing gum within the car you might want to also place your hands on the steering wheel and if it's dark turn on your interior lights these actions will tend to allay any fears the officer might have. Now, one thing that you want to pay attention to is that, after all, police officers have been killed in traffic stops in situations, and the officer's approach to the vehicle is potentially the most dangerous moment. Now, I was talking earlier about the cigarette. If that allows you to calm down, do it. You have to understand, though, that in some states, it's not allowed to smoke while driving so that's why you really want to open the windows be quiet be polite and 
do whatever allows you to, to calm down so you can um, have a conversation with the officer in a polite and courteous manner. Your, your dignity might be offended a little at this point, but remember that you're just doing a few simple things to put the officer in an optimal frame of mind. Mindset is key, folks. Mindset. Emotional state. Also, stay in the car until and unless the officer directs you to get out. Finally, and this is important, don't start rummaging through your back pocket for your wallet and license or in your glove compartment for your registration until the officer asks you for them. For all the officer knows, you could be reaching for a weapon. The thing here is you have to think about the, the state of mind in which the officer is. You have to put yourself in his or her shoes and you have to understand that everybody just is trying to play the game as much as as uh, properly as possible of course we've had issues in this country we've had issues with police with police stops i'm not going to get it right into that this conversation is more about the etiquette the the proper etiquette to adopt when you are pulled over by police so i'm not getting into any uh, any kind of uh, all the all the social issues we've had or still have in the country the racial issues going on no we are going to stick to the proper etiquette to adopt when you have a police officer arresting you not arresting you pulling you over that's the proper word i'll be right back right after this welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie Kiwi. we're also having a conversation here around uh, police stops what to do if you're pulled over if you love the contents, clarity, and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turning on the notification bell so you can be informed in real time whenever we drop a new show. And we do this kind of shows every single day. Not, not the same topic all the time, but we just kind of vary our shows and we drop we drop James, wonderful James of content every single day, rain or shine. Let's talk now about another interesting topic. Can the officer create excuses to search? In general, a police officer who stops you for a traffic violation is not allowed to search your vehicle. Let me repeat that. In general, a police officer who stops you for a traffic violation is not allowed to search your vehicle. But there are several exceptions to this general rule. So after pulling you over, an officer can uh, will watch for any sort of furtive movement. Furtive movement. So a sudden lowering of one of both shoulders, for example, will tip the officer off that you're attempting to hide something under the seat. Remember, officers are usually trained in uh, various approaches so they can see, they, they can, you know, they kind of have some type of sixth sense, if you will. They rely on gut a lot. They rely on training. So they are professionals. So if they sense, if the officer senses that you are attempting to hide something under the seat, this might actually trigger his or her curiosity. An officer enforcing a traffic stop is not looking just for furtive movements. So officers will look for anything incriminating that is in plain view, like open beer or wine bottles, joints or roach clips. So discovery of one item in plain view often leads to a thorough search that reveals more incriminating or illegal objects. So even though by law, the officer is not allowed to search your vehicle. He or she will be looking for furtive movements and uh, incriminating hints, incriminating, uh, incriminating objects. So if you are arrested and your car is towed, the police may generally make an inventory search afterwards. This is called inventory search. Even if they have no reason to suspect there is anything illegal inside. An inventory search means that they are just coming through the car in and out. Even though they were not allowed to do this originally, once they find one little hint of uh, illegal activity or illegal behavior, they are at that moment by default able and allowed by law to search further. Let's talk now about staying in the car and more on searches. One thing you have to pay attention to is that 
An officer who stops you for an alleged traffic violation has the right to insist that you and your passengers get out of, the, of your car. And this decision, this was affirmed by uh, Pennsylvania versus Mims. For the code is 434 US 106 in, 1990, in 1977. As well as uh, in 1997, you have Maryland versus Wilson, 519 US 409. The case number is 409. And uh, so that those two cases are are constituting the jurisprudence that allow have allowed courts and uh, law enforcement to say that a police officer can insist that you and your passengers get out of your car. So clearly, you should get out if asked or instructed to do so. In other words, you should follow the officer's directives, but begin with the assumption that you should remain in the car. In other words, when the police officer just pulls you over, you're not getting out of the car ASAP. You're not getting the car re reflexively. No, you are waiting for him or her to, to tell you, to instruct you to do so. And you should also assume that the officer is on alert, ready to interpret a failure to follow instructions as a threat of danger or an attempt to flee. That's what I was saying earlier. You have to understand he or she is trying to do uh, his or her job. And uh, so anything that does not go the proper way, anything that any movement, any word, any hint of anything, any furtive movement that doesn't go according to plan is going against you at this moment because the, the officer is interpreting things adversely against you. So. An officer who has any reason to suspect that you might be dangerous has a right to conduct a quick pat-down search of your outer clothing. This was affirmed by uh, Arizona versus Johnson in 2009, and uh, this is a 555 US, US case 323. So upon filling any weapon like object during the pat-down, the officer may reach in and get it. So the officer can also seize anything during a proper frisk for weapons that obviously feels like contraband. Also, and this is important, if the police officer reasonably believes you are dangerous and might gain control of weapons, the officer may search areas within the passenger compartment in which a weapon could be placed or hidden. And this jurisprudence was affirmed during the Michigan versus Long. This was in 1983, so 463 US 1032. Let's now talk about talking to the officer. Are you allowed to talk to the officer? Being hostile has led to many problems with police officers. So too has saying more than necessary. The idea here is just to respond to the questions you're asked. Now is not the time to have a conversation with the, with the officer or trying to show that you are you're trying to go on an ego trip. No, now is not the time to show that who is stronger, who has more uh, more testosterone or more progesterone or whatever hormones you have no now is not the time you don't have to be hostile you don't have to be just be courteous and be polite and listen to what the officer instructs you to do you should generally let the officer do the talking responding where appropriate again as i said this is not a conversation we're not here for a conversation this is not a happy hour conversation if you get pulled over it, there must be for a reason either you violated you, you have violated a traffic rule or the officer suspects that your license plate or or other information about you might be suspect for example when asked to hand over your license registration and proof of insurance you should say something like okay or sure and just simply fork over the documents some lawyers caution that an officer who pulls you over for a traffic violation has decided whether to give you a ticket before even approaching your car. Police officers are not perfect as anyone else. We're all humans. So he or she might, might, might already have made a decision to find you and there's nothing you can do about it. So they also acknowledge those are police officers. Sometimes that you can convince an officer who is going to give you a, war a warning to give you a ticket through rude behavior. So th th some lawyers warn that officers will sometimes act as though they might change their minds if you cooperate so that they can get information or an admission out of you. It can be tough to know exactly what to say to an officer's queries, but whatever you do, 
you should never argue do not argue and you should know that you have a right to remain silent although you might have to actually say something to invoke that right so this is something that you your miranda your miranda rules or laws or benefits are always there to pro protect you in miranda rights so you want to be able to say that you have the right to remain silent it doesn't mean that you are acknowledging guilt or anything or that you are trying to hide something it just means that you know maybe you are not in the right mental mind mental frame to respond to the officer so talking to the officer should be unidirectional it should be the officer asking the questions and you giving the answers and very the, the brief the brief the, the briefer the answer the better i'll be right back right after this I'm going there. welcome back folks to another edition another session of the awesome sweetie kiwi show let's now talk about and I've, I've been talking to you about police stops what to do if you're pulled over and i've talked to you about uh, talking to the officer staying in the car and uh what to do right after you stop now talking to a lawyer simple traffic violations often do not require the assistance of an attorney you just have to get the fine fork over the money and just live with it 40 bucks 50 bucks 100 bucks if your car gets stowed just live with it having said that more serious accusations like a change of driving under the like a charge of driving under the influence or possession of drugs often do in those scenarios you need a lawyer there is unless you are legally trained yourself and you understand the subtleties of the law you will need a lawyer if you want to know how the law in your state applies to your situation you want to consult an experienced criminal defense attorney because this is a criminal this is criminal offense so a knowledgeable lawyer can determine whether there might be a basis for a motion to suppress evidence and otherwise guide you through the process this is this is critical folks because um even though you and we've seen this in the news you could be guilty but you if you have a, the best lawyer here this lawyer can have can navigate the the legal system and file a motion to suppress evidence based on um, based on some reasons that he or she might find all right thank you so much for listening to today's conversation i really appreciate it just want to quickly recap today's uh, chat police stops what to do if you are pulled over so i was talking to you about what to do if you see the police car what to do right after you stop whether the, the officer can have um, excuses to search staying in the car talking to the officer and talking to a lawyer afterwards i will see you next time but until then, remember, stay in here. Marvelous.